So we're looking at an anterior view of a right hand. We can see that we've got metacarpals here, and don't forget they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, starting from the thumb side and moving towards the little finger. So the first metacarpal here, each of the metacarpals and phalanges has a base approximately and then a shaft in the middle and a rounded articular prominence of the head at the distal end. So base, shaft, head. And then what that means is we have here metacarpophalangeal joints and then interphalangeal joints. So we have a proximal interphalangeal joint on the fingers here and a distal interphalangeal joint here, whereas on the thumb we only have one interphalangeal joint. Now if we then look at a model that has some ligaments attached, we can see anteriorly here at the metacarpophalangeal joints the palmar ligament or plate. Now these also exist at the interphalangeal joints, but on this model they look very much like their ligament here, but there will be a pad of fibrocartilage in there in the middle. And if you flex the joint on a specimen, you'll be able to see how that pad moves to protect the tendons of the long plexus from getting pinched in between the bones of the joint. Now then if we look at the metacarpophalangeal joints or the interphalangeal joints, we can also see that on the sides they have collateral ligaments. So this would be collateral ligament of the second proximal interphalangeal joint. This would be a collateral ligament on the second metacarpophalangeal joint. So those ones too, nice and easy to spot. The other structure on here that's good to see are these deep transverse metacarpal ligaments that are holding the uh, metacarpal heads together and prevent them from moving away from each other. Now then if we look at a model that has a few more structures still left on, we can see on the fifth digit here, again it's an anterior view of a right hand, we can see on the fifth digit here we've just got those collateral ligaments left on, but on the fourth we have flexor digitorum profundus, on the third we have flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus, but on the second we have this digital sheet that's sitting here. So that's a fibrous digital sheath and if we have a closer look, we can see that it has here an annular band that runs around the flexor, long flexor tendons. And here we have a cruciform band that's made up of two oblique parts that form a cross. Now often on specimens there'll just be one band, one oblique band, and you can't see two that make a cross, you can just see one. But the annular bands on specimens look pretty much like this. So annular and cruciform bands. Now the other connective tissue structure that's useful to look at in the hand is this one, which is the palmar aponeurosis. Sorry, this one I've just put on. But if we zoom out, we can see the palmar aponeurosis. And uh, an aponeurosis is a broad, flat tendon. So here we've got one in the hand. It has longitudinal and transverse bands. So make sure you specify which band if one of them is pinned. Remember that the palmar aponeurosis if is, it is attached to the palmaris longus tendon if it's present. And then also usually both those structures are attached to the flexor retinaculum, which we can see here, which makes the roof of the carpal tunnel.